Hi guys, this is Vishal here from Trapcode. So in this video, we will understand how to implement and edit and update flow in Superbase. So we are basically doing an end-to-end -end integration with Superbase where we are fetching data, uh, fetching individual record, creating new items, updating, deleting, pagination, sorting, searching and all those things. So we are doing an end-to-end integration with Superbase. So, so that you can build a full-fledged web application on top of Superbase, where Superbase work as a backend as a database, and Drive Code work as a 100% front-end layer or a front-end builder, which will fetch the data, delete, update, show data, and do all those things. But the database remains uh, at the Superbase. We are not storing anything at the Drive Code end. So, in the previous videos, we have covered how to fetch data, how to fetch list of data. So, this data is coming directly from Superbase. And we have also implemented the create flow where you can go and create new products. Okay. And the data will get stored in Superbase. So this is, so this is how the collection looks like. So there's a product collection, which is name, description, price, manufacturing date. So we have fetched the list of data from Superbase displayed in the list form in the table. We have created new records. We have fetched records of a, uh, details of an individual record. Now we are going to implement the edit or update flow. So let's say I want to edit some data, how that flow works in trap code. Okay, so we have this edit button as of now nothing is implemented. So we'll uh, implement from scratch. So what we'll do, we'll create an edit page. We'll create a external API. So which is the REST API, which will call uh, to Superbase to fetch individual data and to update those, those records. And then we'll redirect it back to the list page. We'll create a couple of events also. So let's see how that can be done. So as of now, we have a list page, a create page and details page. So let's create one more page, which is our edit page. Okay, so I'll say product edit and then create. So I'll not do anything here uh, as of now. Let's complete the other flow and then we'll come back here. Okay. So the page created successfully, it's a blank page. So let's replace the content of this page with some existing page because we don't want to design from scratch so i'll say just replace the content from um, a create page so it will just bring everything from create page and just re replace the content so it is done let's reload so it is here so as of now this is a product create form so i'll just for now just delete it okay so let's go and implement the external API. So that is the first thing which we need it. So we can want to create an API which will just go and update the data in the super base. So I'll go and create external API. So let's see what type of API is needed. So I'll go to my uh, super base documentation. So this is the API of my project. Okay, so we have implemented the read APIs, read rows, insert rows we have done. So now we want update rows. So update is basically a patch call. And this is the base url so i'll just copy till here okay so i think this is this is needed to basically tell that which particular field you want to decide and how to decide that which particular record to update so we will be updating on the basis of id right so the id is unique so this is the id 2 3 4 5 10 18 so we will be updating on the basis of id you can also update on the basis of any other field so you just need a individual identifier for that particular row Right, so let's update on the basis of ID. So I'll just copy this. I'll come here, I'll paste this. I'll say update row in Superbase or let's say update product row. Okay, and this is a patch call, so I'll choose patch. So API key, so these are the uh, headers. So I'll just put in header API key and the value is. This. So this is a specific to my project. Okay. So when you will create a project, you will definitely have a set different, different API key and different authorization token. So authorization and then bearer token. How this value is coming in Superbase, you can enable, disable it from here. So you see, if you say hide it, so it has hide all the keys. And if you can enable, it will show you here. Otherwise, you can just go to uh, the API, the project settings and the API. And all the keys are here. So this is the API key and this is the Vera token. So this is fine. Now we want to send the parameter. So a content type, it's optional, you can put. Okay. So now we want to map the values. 
so we have these uh, the name of the columns are already here so it's name description price and manufacturing date so let's go there and do the mapping so here i'll say non persisted collection item because we're not persisting the collection so the data is there on the ui which is getting fetched from api and we are just passing that so it is wrapped in a collection but it is not persisting so that's why we call it a non persisted collection so i'll say product okay and collection fields uh, so let's say name is will go in name next let's say uh, description so i'll just copy description which will come from my form in the form of uh, description field then price so i'll say price which will come in price field and then manufacturing date so you can also send uh, individual record individual keys so let's say you just want to update name or you just want to update price so that can also be done because this is a patch call so patch can basically update a individual field or whereas post or put updates the the complete collection okay so the mapping is done we don't want to process a response because uh, we are not storing anything so we'll say okay just push the data and if it is a success redirect us to the list page so i'll just say save settings okay before that we need to do one more thing so this is some column and some value we need to define that which column and what value so i'll say id i want to identify the record on the basis of id so we need to pass id also here so i'll we can either call it id or whatever variable we want to call we can call it we'll map it to the id of that particular record okay and uh, let's go here and replace this with a dynamic value so in to use dynamic value in trap code we used to uh, to double curly braces and i'll say id so it will take the id of that particular record and just change it here so when we are updating product with id1 it will update product with id1 when we are updating product with id2 it will update product with id2 like this so this is how the dynamic value goes in trap code this is it so i'll just go and save setting so we have created the event and we have also have to show the added form prefill so that we need to make a call to fetch the data but we have already done it so you see we have a api call fetch individual product details so this is needed to show the data prefill here also we are fetching on the basis of id where we have given the name pid again this is completely what you want to give you can give product id pid whatever right because this is only a temporary variable which is just getting replaced here that's all so it is basically fetching the details of individual record and then binding it to a collection to collection schema and sending it to a page so we will be calling the same api on the added page where we will say go and fetch the data of this particular record and show in the form prefix after that we'll make the patch call the one the one which we just created and basically update the records and once this is successful it will uh, take us to the list page so let's go back to the edit page and then bind this before that let's create event also okay so i'll go and say create event so this is the event for the form so we'll say edit product details in superbase so here what we'll say we'll just say go to an external api and send data that's all right and we say update product row in superbase uh, these are all uh, optional values success just success message and then after that we'll say just redirect to the uh, page redirect to the list page which is our home page that's all right so very simple event which is sending the data to superbase and then just redirect it to the list page so let's go to the form and then bind this event and let's see so we need to do two things first we need to show the form, form prefilled then once the form is prefilled the form should submit the values to superbase so let's do both so i'll go to the pages go to the settings and here bind a collection why we are binding a collection because we want to show the value prefilled and to understand what all fields will come uh, the data will come in what all fields we need to bind a collection so that it understand that okay these are the fields like name description manufacturing date so we have binded a collection from where it will get the data the default behavior is it try to fetch from the trap code database but here we are not using trap code database so we will say fetch from external api that is asking that which api which api should i call to fetch my data so i'll say 
uh, fetch individual product details. So this is the API which it needs to call. And that's all. So I'll just update it. So now data mapping is done. So this page will, as soon as the page will load, it will fetch the data from Superbase for that particular individual row. Now we want to show the data prefilled in a collection form, right, to edit it. So what we'll do, we'll just drop a collection form. We'll drop a collection form and choose collection which is product and the event which is added product details in Superbase. Okay, so it has already generated a form for me. Okay, so let's say update product form. So now let's go and link this page. So this page is ready. Uh, so the it will the data will get prefilled and then it will make an update call. So now just go and let's link it to the list page. So this is my edit button which got created as part of data table, but it is not functional. So let's make it functional. So I'll say which page go to product edit page. What to take? Take the ID from whatever the collection is pointed. Take the ID field. Okay. So this will pass the ID to the edit page. From there, we'll pass the ID to the external API to fetch the data, show the form prefit, and then use the same ID to update the data in Superbase. So I'll go to my list page and reload again. So as of now, these links are not functional, but let's reload. So page is loaded. All, all this data is coming from Superbase. Okay. So now let's try to edit this one product too. So I'll go and click edit. If you see the URL, it is actually passing the ID to because this is the ID of the product. So it has opened the product to edit page. You see the data is coming prefilled because it is making a real time call just to see whether it is making a real time call or not. Let's go and change this to under to something else in Superbase and let's see what happens. So I'll go to Superbase and let's say product two. I'll just change it to 210. Let's see. Now let's go here and just reload this page. So now if you see, it's 210. So it is making a fresh call to Superbase and bringing everything. Now I want to update this. So let's say update it to 222. We have already binded the event where we are just making a patch call to Superbase and updating the data. So let's say we are updating product uh, 222 price. Let's say instead of 10, we'll make it 211 and then date from 9th to 10th and then I'll submit. So what it will do, it will just send this data to Superbase and after success, it will redirect me to the list page. So I'll click submit, success, and redirect it to the a list page where the there is an updated information coming. So that means the information is actually updated on Superbase. So let's go and check. So I'll just refresh. So this is the product to which we updated. So let's see. So it is here now, product 222, manufacturing date, and manufacturing date. So everything is updated now. Right, so this is how you implement the update flow. So let's try to update one more, or let's say let's create a product and then just update it. Okay, so let's say product eight, test eight, price 320, and some date, submit. It has made make a call to Superbase to create the product and redirect us to the list page. So let's go to Superbase, refresh this. There should be some product date here. So this is it with the ID 19. Okay. Now let's go back to trap code and update this. So I come back to trap code on the list page. This product 8 is here. Let's go and edit it. ID is 19. You can also use any other key since uh, ID is unique. So we are using ID, but if you don't want user to guess ID, like they can guess like 19, 20, 21, and they can enter in the URL. So you can use UID or any other field which you want, right? Which is, which you think is unique. So the data is coming prefilled. So let's update it to 8A, 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 something like this, 8888 price 328 and date to 8 okay so that's all 
I'll submit this. So now this will basically update the record in Superbase in the real time. So let's go to Superbase. Let's refresh this. So this should be updated. So here you see 8 AAA test price and date. So it has updated it in the real time. Created a record, displayed on the list page, fetch the data, shown on the edit page and then updated. So this completes the, the edit update flow for individual records in Superbase. We will continue to create more course educational videos around uh, different different use cases. Keep watching. See you again in the next video. Bye bye.